Five point Calvinism is just like Spurgeon said, it's just giving God the sovereignty. I don't understand how you could. I don't understand how you can read the Old and New Testaments. I don't understand how you can read thematic context of Scripture and not give God sovereignty. And like you, you and I both have total sovereignty over who we let into our home. And if somebody tries to get into our home, we sh- well, I, I don't know if you're carrying. I would <laughs> I, shoot them. I, I do indeed. Uh, yeah, have the means to. to yeah, shoot there them. you go. <laughs> well, yeah, so, but that's what we do because you have sovereignty over your dominion. So I don't know why when it comes to God, we, we say, no, God, you don't get to choose who you let into your home. Like you, what? I mean, Vadi Bakum, the reformed theologian, he, he has this great sermon, this great little soundbite where he says, you know, Arminian semi-Pelagian theology, they, they pose it as God's just tossed out the life preserver and you just have to swim over to it and grab it. And it's just there and you've got to grab it. And he says, like, dead men don't swim. You were dead in your trespasses. So not to, like, I'll monologue on Calvinism forever. It's just, to me, I read scripture, and I think you have to be just blindfolded to get anywhere but, at the very least, to to a point of, like, four-point Lutheranism. Because um, everyone always gets hung up on people going to hell, and I understand. Yeah, which, well, which is, so I'm not actually familiar with four points, so which point do they ditch? Oh, well, limited atonement. They always, they always yeah. get a problem with limited atonement. And that's, atonement. I think that's where I first reached out to you is whenever you did the one on limited atonement, or I said that I was interested in that because yeah. I think that is the one that seems the least nice. You know, if there yeah. was one that was not nice, it's yeah. the idea 100%. that it's because you just, well, Jesus didn't die for everyone. Well, I'm like, if he did die specifically for everyone, then why isn't everyone saved? That's all that yeah. that means to me is that yeah. it's whether it's an effectual grace that it applies to everybody mm-hmm. or whether it's to give people the opportunity and that's kind of I think the that phrase leads... is, is is sufficient for some efficient for or e- sufficient for all efficient for some mm. uh, yeah. and I can't remember maybe it was Calvin who said that but that the, the the sacrifice of Jesus it's sufficient for all but it's only efficient for the elect um, mm. so when I say that you know Jesus only died for his people well for starters Stop. Sorry, I've got the, the, the form here. Uh, yeah. When I say Jesus only died for his people, that's not me saying, that's Jesus saying that. He says, I'm right. praying, Father, not for everyone, not for the world. He says that verbatim. He says, I'm not praying for the world, mm-hmm. but I'm praying for just my people. Yeah, and then you get into John 6 as well, the idea of, uh, you know, that who, who, because uh, it's, it's my rebuttal always, John 3.16, mm-hmm. is to go to, to John 6 and be like, well, whosoever believes will be saved well then who can be saved it's Mm -hmm. those who the father draws you know the only people who can come to the father are those that he draws they always stop right at that verse yeah yeah exactly so there's there's always you know but i don't think whosoever is like a just a blank check to that doesn't mean who whosoever would like to it's more you know to me it's definitely the whosoever is a very specific whosoever you know it doesn't say who is enabled to believe yeah but that's that's our our the the unfortunate you know, miscommunication of, of King, the new King James is, you know, nobody understands what, whosoever, whosoever doesn't mean yeah. everyone. It means no. who, it's a specific, these people. Yeah. But, I mean, and then you go through the rest of it. And I mean, John, the book of the gospel of John is the most Calvinist freaking book in the right. world. <laughs> yeah. Um, like I'm calling these people and those people don't hear my call because they're not part of my life. Just read it. Right. It's like, how can you yeah. not? So, and then everyone will pull stuff out of context. We're like, well, yeah. God doesn't desire that anyone should perish. I'm like, oh my gosh, like context people yeah again there's that comes to the kind of two wills the the will the sovereign will and the i guess his uh i can't remember the, the what the official terms are but the there's sovereign his... will the effect the effectual will the perfect yeah, will. yeah um but i mean even in that verse so that's that's one i've heard i've heard that take on that verse that passed i think it's from peter um uh i've heard that take my take on it is like he's talking to his people he's not talking to everyone and when he's talking yeah. about perishing he's talking about corporeal physical perishing because the bible makes a distinction between physical death and spiritual death mm-hmm. and for example in corinthians when paul's saying like you will save your brother from destruction he's not talking about mm-hmm. eternal destruction because the guy's still a brother brother is familial language if yeah. he's in the family he's not going to have spiritual death but he will have physical death just like i'm going to heaven you're going to heaven but if you jump off a cliff tomorrow you're getting there a lot faster so there's mm-hmm. there's physical and there's spiritual death mm-hmm.